Hey guys, thanks for joining me. So one of the things I've been working on lately has been an 18th century pocket because let's face it, pockets in women's clothing is ridiculously subpar. Um, they're small, they don't really hold everything that we need to take. And a lot of times I just don't wanna carry a purse. Like I don't wanna carry it around and knock it into things or have to worry about, did I leave it? Or, you know, is it, do I, I need a place to put it down? Or, you know, it, it, it's just annoying. So. What I decided to do was actually make an 18th century pocket so that I could tie it on with whatever I was wearing. Sounds like a great idea. But in the vein of most of the things I do, um, it's an 18th century pocket, but it's got the Medusa spin on it. So I'm not going with a traditional embroidery pattern or anything. I'm, I'm kind of taking it more in a dark goth direction. So what I've done is I've actually videoed the construction and uh, the embroidery that I did. Uh, so I will clip that together here for you guys and let you see kind of how I constructed it and how I put it all together. And then I'll show you the reveal at the end. So to begin our pocket, I went and looked through to see what kind of scrap fabric was lying around. And what I found were these two pieces. I have one that is a cotton, kind of like a twill it's it's not as thick as like a duck cloth but it's definitely at least two or three times as thick as a piece of broadcloth so it's going to make a nice strong lining for the pocket and then because a lot of my wardrobe is dark colors if not black i wanted to make sure that the pocket kind of matched everything in that way so what i did was i found this piece of black cotton broadcloth that i'm going to use to do the embroidery on and this is gonna work out really well. Um, I think this will hold up well for the, the embroidery floss and, and getting kind of tugged around on the embroidery hoop when we get to that point. So once I picked out the fabrics, the next thing I did was I went ahead and traced out a pattern for the pocket. And this is just a, kind of my interpretation of the pattern based on different examples that I found. Pockets come in a lot of different sizes. You have teardrop shapes like this, you have more square shapes or more triangular shapes. There, there really wasn't a, a lot of rules to what the, the shape was. It was more kind of what worked for you. So looking at different portraiture and looking at different examples, I mapped out, okay, this is roughly the shape that I like. Um, and this is kind of how I want that to be. So I went and I, I looked at where the pocket placements were and most of the pocket, the hand holds are up towards the top. So I've marked out where I want the top uh, opening to be. Um, so I'll have that for later. And kind of just roughly taking, okay, how wide does it need to be for my hand, the widest part of my hand? And also if I go in at an angle, will my hand still fit inside that opening? I think what I've got here is gonna work. So we're gonna, we're gonna give it a shot. And then I also note that I, for one, like to put sharp objects in my pocket. Uh, I am constantly having a pair of embroidery scissors or thread nips or, or hair sticks or something um, that's gonna end up poking through the pocket if I don't reinforce it. So I traced off a piece down here at the bottom and what I did was uh, I marked out where this is gonna be a separate uh, pattern piece. So once I cut out the pocket, I'm gonna cut out uh, two of these, one for each side to reinforce the bottom and hopefully make the bottom of the pocket a little bit stronger. So once I had all this figured out and kind of the shape and everything, I started to cut out my pattern pieces. So again, the lining that we're gonna use is gonna be this, this twill. So I just laid my pattern out onto this and cut out the lining for my pocket. So now I have my pocket lining cut out. And as you can see here, I've gone ahead and I have cut out the extra piece and just kind of basted it down to hold it into place as well as going along and basting out the stitch line uh, that I'll need to actually sew the pocket together. The uh, chalk just rubs off and since I know I, it's, you know, I'm going to be handling this and, and padding down these, these pockets, um, the reinforcement, I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose the tracing line and have to keep redoing that. So in order to avoid redoing it multiple times, I just went ahead and put a basting line. Doesn't take very long. And once I started doing this a while back, I realized that it's probably the greatest thing ever because then you always know where you're supposed to sew. So it's really great. It does take a little, you know, it takes a minute, but it, 
it's not something that in the long run, if you're looking at how much time you spent is really knocking, you know, adding a whole lot to your, to your project. Um, both of these maybe took me 20 minutes to base out. Um, so I've pad stitched down my, uh, or, or basted down my pocket reinforcement. And now what I'm going to do is, since nobody is actually going to see the inside of my pocket, is I'm going to go ahead and machine quilt the bottom here um, on both sides so that that reinforcement is just as solid as it can possibly be. And then once that, you know, once that's done, then the lining will be ready for the outer to go on. Now for the outer, as we're using this black broadcloth, unlike the uh, red lining here, I needed to have a much bigger piece to work off of. So one of these will be the, the back and one will be the front. And I know that I want to embroider both of them. So on the front, I'm gonna have my decorative embroidery. And then on the back of it, I'm actually gonna probably embroider my name and the date in, that I've constructed this pocket. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that the amount of fabric that I've saved around the edges is enough so that when I put this into the embroidery hoop, I have a hangover on both sides so that I can maintain the tension and, and keep everything the way it needs to be because as I'm sewing it and messing with the fabric, it's going to stretch and, and kind of skew. And I wanna make sure that I have selvage here without having to put the snap the embroidery hoop over what I've actually embroidered, I have enough overhang so that I can maintain my tension. And I know that I'm not going to have any embroidery up here at the very tippy top. This part right here is actually the fold under. And so the top of the pocket ends up being about this wide and this is where our waistband or our waist string is going to come off so that we can tie it around our waist. So now that I know how big I want this, I'm gonna go ahead and trace these out, but I'm not going to cut them out. I'm just gonna trace them, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do as I did before, and I'm gonna do the basting stitch around the edge so that I know exactly where the seam is gonna be, and that way I don't uh, embroider over that point. I know that I have to stay within that, probably about uh, at least an eighth of an inch inside that line in order to make sure that the embroidery doesn't get caught up whenever I sew all of this together.
All right, so we finished up our embroidery on the skeleton and scythe, and I'm really excited to be done with that portion of it. That took a while. Um, several evenings sitting on the couch, um, watching TV and a couple of, a couple of Saturdays, uh, fiddling around with it for a few hours. So, um, now that it's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron this out so that I get everything nice and smooth. I can, uh, take a look and see how much, if any, my fabric has, uh, stretched from me manipulating it and adding thread onto it and make sure that the overall shape of this is going to be nice and smooth. Uh, when I uh, match it up to my lining. And then what I decided that I want to do, it's a little bit plain uh, for the background, but I don't want to take away too much from all of the work I did on the embroidery on the skeleton. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, a diapering pattern, which is uh, something you see a lot in backgrounds on calligraphy and illumination. Uh, I'm going to trace out a um, kind of a diamond shaped grid pattern onto the backing here. I figure that will put a little bit of something to it so it won't be so flat, uh, but it's not gonna detract from the main portion of the embroidery. So I'm gonna get to work on ironing, tracing out a grid, and getting that quilting done, and then we will be at the point where we can assemble our pocket. All right, so the diapering is done. Now I'm going to use some of this uh, black velvet ribbon that I have to do the edging around the, the sides as well as the pocket slit. So I'm gonna get to work on that. Uh, and then once I'm done with that, I'll be ready to begin the assembly.
I'm really happy with how this pocket turned out. Um, I really, the embroidery I think came out really well. Um, it's very noticeable from a distance, you know exactly what it is. Um, when you get up on it, you can see the kind of some of the shading that I did and, and everything. And I, I really like the way the diapering came out too. Um, I added these little stars to make it kind of look like a night sky. Um, and where I thought I was initially going to roll this under and kind of shorten it up here, I actually ended up leaving it long because this way I can actually put my belt over the top of it and it kind of gives it an additional support. So when I'm wearing a, another layer, like another belt, um, or if I want to slip it up underneath the edge of my corset, I actually can do that. Um, the straps, I wholly overconstructed these straps. Um, I think these straps could probably tow a car. Um, they don't need to be as strong as I made them, but um, the broadcloth on its own just was not going to cut it. It was going to rip over time. So even though it's over constructed now, I think as I wear it and use it and the fabric um, softens up a little bit, it'll be easier to tie. Right now, I'm probably not going to tie it like in a bow. I'll probably just tie it in like a square knot and then tuck the ends under either the belt that I'm wearing or inside the lip of the skirt um, just to keep it out of the way. But um, the finished project I'm, I'm very happy with and this is something I know that I'll wear a lot in the future. Um, so thanks so much for joining me. Uh, there will be more of these historically inspired adventures to come. So if you liked what you saw today, go ahead and click the subscribe button and we hope to see you again. Thanks. Thank you.